At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. We're welcoming back today one of my dear friends and amazing practitioners with Liberate, Travis Taylor. And we are going to be talking about um, really recovery through the darkness. And he has an incredible story to share. But also, he's already shared an incredible story in this book, The Last Breath, where one of the chapters is all about a personal story that he had involving his mother's passing. And so, you know, a couple different things, and I think that there's even going to be more that we learn through this conversation today about really, it doesn't matter how dark moments get that you can always recover and move forward. So welcome, Travis. Thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for having me, Christina. It's so great and an honor to be here. Oh, it's an honor to have you. <laughs> so, I mean, this, this topic, and I know that there's a couple different things that we want to touch on today, but where do you want to begin? Yeah, I think the important thing for people to remember is hope. That the experiences that they have, even if they feel painful at the time or hard on the body, ultimately are for your highest good. And mm -hmm. the divine plan would pursue itself to your greatest evolution. And mindfulness is important to remember to have in these moments that you're suffering that there is hope to guide you through the darkness that you might be experiencing right now because I know that you have it within you to recover from whatever you're feeling, whatever you're going through, whatever addiction you might be facing, if it's addiction that you're facing, is available to be healed. You have the capacity within you to heal through this moment if you're suffering right now. And that's what I learned, what I know from my book, that was that came out last year right before the accident that nearly killed me and broke me open even further. I wrote a chapter that you mentioned in the book that we talked about before, Broken Open, because I'd never believed that we were broken apart by experiences that we would feel that we might not like. We're not broken down. We're broken open, open to more love, open to more compassion for ourselves, open to more understanding, and open to have awareness for whatever lesson we chose to learn and we do choose these experiences from a divine sense of self and the soul plan in order for us to learn and grow and evolve as a soul entity in the third dimensional realm, which is, which is what we're all here to do. Right. You know, and hearing you say that and having those that are listening, it's really this empowering perspective to have that you chose these experiences, these moments of darkness, these moments of challenges, these moments of physical pain, these moments of feeling of whatever difficulties and challenges, right? And, you know, oftentimes I think people get caught up in the victim mentality. Like, why is this happening to me? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, my life sucks, these people in my life, then there's a blame on the outside world. Um, and, you know, it's when a very disempowering narrative to have when yeah. you have a mindset of lack, you feel like you're this ball that everybody's kicking, which isn't the case. You're the phoenix like I have on my arm that I had for many years before this accident. Phoenix rises again every time. And you might ask yourself, how many more times do I have to deal with this? How many more times do I have to get up from the floor of my house, of my life? How many times do I have to get up and go through my day and live with this? And my answer to that is always the same. Just one more time. Yeah. That's it. That's all that God wants of you is to just have you get up one more time. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Yeah. One more time and to, and to see and to have that empowering perspective back and say, well, what is there for me? I think the moment mm -hmm. that you step out of this victim or it's them or how how is this world doing this to me and you say how does this serve me 
right? Exactly, yes. And then you say, okay, well, what am I learning? How am I growing? How is this aiding in whatever fill in the blank? And then that's the experience of being cracked open. Mm -hmm. Right. Of this expansion of this possibility of like maybe some of my most difficult times in life are really not there for pain and suffering, but for learning, growth and development. And I think that it would be great to, you know, of course, everybody, I highly recommend checking out some of the other videos that we did with uh, Travis, including a more in-depth uh, podcast that we did specifically on the chapter of being broken open. And, uh, but, you know, I think that it's important to hear, like, because, you know, sometimes people can't really relate to people that say, oh, they, they had a little bad thing. They, you know, they, they had the situation mm -hmm. happen. I mean, you've had pretty massive experiences and to have this perspective. And it's, I know everybody's experience is subjective and it's all personal to your own. Uh, so that's not saying one is necessarily a whole bunch worse than another, but there is a collective consciousness that it gets a shock factor of like, I can't believe that happened to you and mm -hmm. you're this positive or you're this forward thinking or you you feel actually a sense of gratitude that this was instilled upon you. So can we start by sharing a little bit of like a synopsis on on that chapter in the book and what happened? And then I, I think that if you don't mind sharing a little bit about the accident that nearly killed you and where you're at right now. And I mean, how many surgeries have you already had in the, in the last few months? <laughs> I've had two recent surgeries and a hip surgery that I was just having had done on the 7th of January, which was, I'm still healing from the arm surgery that I now can actually move my arm again. I can bend and extend the elbow. And you had surgeries before that too. And several. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. there's many surgeries and recovery <laughs> that's going on in the physical realm. Um, but let's let's start with the, the chapter in the book. Absolutely. It starts off by my mother's last words to me in the third dimensional space. She said, next time you see me, I'll be happy. And she and I knew at the time that she was going to plan to kill herself because she was suffering and struggling with her cancer that had succumbed with and through her body. She was going to die really soon, but she wanted to die on her own terms. And... We had planned, she asked me before I left Spokane to help her plan her death because she knew I could and would, that I would be able to do that for her, which we planned her death. And I didn't know at the time, next time you see me, I would, I'll be happy, meant that it would be ultimately energetically from an experience of her visitation of me in the mm. spirit as a spirit. And I didn't know that until I got sober the first time and I was in rehab in 2006. I checked myself into rehab for alcoholism and drug addiction, which I was experiencing devastating things that were happening in my life that I chose life and I chose to get help, which yeah. was what I needed to do. And during that, experience of rehab she visited me in a dream and we used to love golfing and she visited me we were golfing in a dream and it was something we loved to do together and she at the hole that we were golfing on I remembered something felt felt familiar to it for me and I looked up from this green that we were on and I saw through the trees people started walking towards me. And I started to recognize these people walking towards me and they were all wearing white. And it was such a beautiful thing for me to realize in that dream that it was everyone I ever knew, everyone that I ever come in contact with. And I felt love in my mm. body more than I had ever felt before. And I broke down crying in the dream. I felt undeserving of that love and I started crying and I woke up crying from that dream and I went out to have a cigarette. It was in the middle of the night and I went out to have a cigarette in the rehab center because I was smoking at the time. And 
I looked up and saw Orion's belt above me in a, in a rare star-filled sky in Seattle. Mm. It's rare to have a, a clear sky at that time in October. It was also my 33rd birthday that I was in rehab for. So, and I looked up and I felt my mom sitting right next to me on the bench that I was sitting on in her hand placed on my leg and I felt her presence for the first time since she had died many years before. And I knew in that moment that everything was gonna be okay. Mm. I felt her love for me as a mother and as for the love that I felt for her. And I knew everything was gonna be okay. That was the first time I actually felt that it was gonna be okay for me. And then the story ensues to talk about some of the synchronicities that later showed up in my life. My alignment to my teacher, first teacher that taught me Reiki mm -hmm. and energy medicine. I mentored under her. She invited me to mentor under her two, for two years in 2009 and 2011. And I was certified in her energy medicine series. And all of the synchronistic events that occurred from clients where I could see, and I first learned that I was clairvoyant in 2007. I didn't know that before. I didn't even know what that term meant, but I could see things in my mind with anyone that I had touched when I was doing Reiki or later when I did a radio show and I would have a caller call in, I could connect in with their energy and know them by way of message for whatever way that came through to me, whether that's clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, clairgustance, clairaliance, all the, all the senses that we have in the third dimension, we have the ability and capacity to connect to them energetically on other dimensions. We just don't listen. Yeah. We just don't stop and listen. No, so that's, stop and listen yeah, and we don't work those muscles, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. So and, if I'm hearing correctly, you know, um, so reiterate for those listening is that you, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't think people got the, the gravitas of, you know, planning your mother's passing, right? Mm -hmm. And her own suicide to, you know, then having this lead you on a chapter in a life that instead of it being something that you know, unwinds you and maybe it did, maybe it was really painful for a mm -hmm. little bit and part of the reason that you had to go into rehab, right? You know, but you, af as, you know, and sometimes things take a few years for the lessons to unfold, right? Mm -hmm. but, it takes whatever it takes. Sometimes it takes lifetimes to work on self-love. Yeah, but then it led you into healing and it led you into Absolutely. understanding other gifts and a bigger perspective on the world. And it led you to helping other people and developing and knowing yourself more and having these experiences of this self-love, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and, and I reiterate that for somebody to say like, okay, how can, you know, losing a parent be a good thing? Right. Mm -hmm, you right. know, because we get caught up in these like specifics and say, well, no, that collectively has to be bad and it's got to be 100 percent painful. It doesn't mean pain doesn't mean that you can't still be grateful. You can have pain and be grateful in the same time mm -hmm. for what it develops and how it continues to unfold and impact on a ripple effect. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they don't have to operate separately. Right. Right. My mom, in some ways. I couldn't really be free with her being in my life. She would always have this sense of our relationship was very much aligned with each other. And I wouldn't necessarily decide things on my own. I would always ask myself, how do, what would my mother feel about this? And how would my mom feel about it? And after she died, I was then free to learn and grow as an independent person mm. on my own as an adulting, and I have various ways in which my adulting has not led me to what you would ordinarily think is a good thing, but I always know that I'm on a divine path when I sit 
in those quiet moments of self that I am much more kind to myself than I used to be. I hold myself as I would a best friend with mm -hmm. kindness, compassion, love, patience, and empathy, which mm -hmm. I didn't used to do. I used to be very stark and stagnant and a very directorial and dictatorial and judgmental with myself, harder on myself than I would be with anyone else. Mm. And I think that's uh, true of many people. That is true of many people. You know, and it's important to note of like what, you know, you saying that what many people might think is these negative choices or things or situations, but oftentimes we, we learn we learn both ways, but oftentimes we learn more from the things that we struggle through and our failure or, or complications than we do from ease and grace, right? Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't mean that you can't invite ease, grace, and happiness into your life, and that's beautiful. But also when you're having these struggles or these more hard choices or situations to go through, you can really look at them and say, wow, this must be a great lesson, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I even go back, I mean, everybody's been in school at some point, no matter what level of education you've taken, and there's been a multiple choice test. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee that you learn more the multiple choice tests that you got, the questions that you got wrong than the ones you got right. And I say that for a couple different reasons. <laughs> One being, you don't even look at the ones that you got right, right? right. You don't reread them but you could have guessed on the bubble that you filled in, right? You know, and, but the ones you got wrong, if you care about your grade or, or whatnot, and you care about that, that subject, you tend to read that question over and say, well, how did I get this wrong? And then you spend time, energy, and effort on it. And then you look it up and then you <clears throat> read a little bit more on it or whatnot, and you figure out the right answer and that sticks with you. And what if it's true of life? <clears throat> What if it's exactly the mm -hmm. same? What if the things that we quote unquote fail at or the things that are like these devastating moments are this ability to teach us more, mm -hmm. to have us learn it at a level of mastery instead of just learning it as a level of something that we just kind of move forward with, right? Yeah, it'd be super easy if we prayed for strength one night and just woke up the next morning super strong and buff, but we don't do that. We pray for strength and we are brought opportunities to demonstrate perseverance in our lives yeah that's a okay so that's a, i mean it's such a great way to say it now i'm sure a lot of people are curious so that that's already been a pretty challenging situation of courses of events to get through right yeah from your mother to recovery to any of those other feelings and things. So what what happened recently? Well, during COVID, I was still within several systems of despair in my life. I had financial situations that I couldn't, was struggling to meet, and I wasn't able to make what I thought I had planned to do when I came down to LA. I wasn't meeting the goals that I had set for myself and I got into a depression. I also, in during the end of COVID in 2020, when this book came out, I was suffering in silence in some ways, which is sometimes what I can tend to do. And I went through a relapse and I was got back into some sort of, well, some denial that I was denying the fact that I struggled before. Mm. And I thought I was better than I was before, but that isn't true. An alcoholic is an alcoholic is an alcoholic, whether they drink or not. And yeah. the ment mental state that I was in was certainly not in my ultimate highest good. And during one of those relapses, I ended up having an accident and I fell from my balcony three stories to the pavement. I don't remember exactly what happened because I think in some ways I'm being protected by that conscious recollection of it. Hmm. I was 
in some ways blacked out even from that last experience that I had in physical form before I landed, pun seriously <laughs> intended, landed myself into a medically induced coma. And I fractured my hip, my femur, my ribs. I had a collapsed lung. I shattered my right arm and was put into a coma that lasted six weeks. Wow. And when I came back to this dimension, when I was brought out of the coma, I didn't at first even understand this dimension. It was very difficult for me to understand and come back from that dark place. Well, it's such a long time to be in a, you know, I know some people are in comas a lot longer than that, but six weeks is a long time. It's a long time. I had a, long, a lot of atrophying of my muscles and I had a trach that I still have a scar from here and I still have a scar from the GI tube that fed me for all those weeks. And I lost about 50 pounds from the weight that I am now. And I had a beard like out to here, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Jesus hair. And I felt like what happened up here, I didn't understand because they don't give you a book when you, when you come out of a coma of everything that you have gone through while you were in a coma and all the surgeries you had to have. That would have been helpful had I even had the, the comprehension to understand what I was reading. But as I came to this dimension, I just had awareness mm. and I had to, I learned later about everything that ensued from the accident and gained back much of the memory that I could have up until the point that I just talked about. And all the surgeries that I've had. And, and what do you think that that has given you? You know, where, you know, the, this recovery in the darkness you know, beyond, if we take it even beyond recovery, mm -hmm. right? Because going through that and having hope and having faith that things are going to get better, the pain is going to subside, the, the movement and uh, mobility is going to come back, right? And that's part of it, right? Mm -hmm. But we're, as we're talking about these gifts or this growth or these lessons, has it been enough time where you're starting to see what those are for yourself? Or is are you getting glimpses into it? Or has it not been enough time yet? I think in some ways, I very much had to get this last piece of the puzzle of self-love down. I thought and could relate to the understanding that I was lovable, but I never really got there physically. Even with my own intuition, I knew that there was something missing from the self-love that I was able to accept into my body mm. in, the fifth, in the fourth chakra here, which is how we receive love. I was still blocked. And much of the initial recovery in the rehab centers that I was in phys for physical rehab, I just would intuitively look clairvoyantly at what was available for my healing. And I just saw the color green, which mm. represents the love and represents the heart chakra. And as even I touch my heart now, I can feel the warmth that, that brings into my body. And the gratitude that I have for that experience is immense. And I know I wasn't done. I know that very much I wasn't done on earth. I still have much to do on earth. And I first know that my book is going to be my next big major project. Going back to my memoir is very important. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm here. That's beautiful. That's why I'm here. So through some of these experiences of, let's just say, extreme pain, physically, mm -hmm. mentally, or emotionally, right? That they were all pointing back to the discovery of what it means to truly love yourself. Mm -hmm. And have that connection of peace 
and intimacy and comfort and compassion and authentic, unconditional love. And to receive the love not only for yourself, but to accept the love that the universe and God has for you and spirit has for you was still much of the part, piece of the lesson, the last piece that I needed to accept and learn. Yeah, and you, and you mentioned a lot about receiving, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I th think through that process for, you know, six weeks, you and your life depended on the care of another. Absolutely. Right? And even maybe a little longer than that, but definitely for those six weeks that you were in a coma and mm -hmm. then however long in the hospital stay, like, and even after support, right? And yeah. so it was like you were forced to receive. Exactly. Sometimes some of us are so stubborn that we need to have that forced upon us. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Exactly. The situation will happen where you have to receive. <laughs> you'll accept this or not, but you'll have to do it at some point if you don't. Yeah. And, I mean, that's just, I mean, I hope that the people that are listening can get that, you know, the levels of learnings and lessons that are there and how every experience does have something that it gives to us. Right. Yeah, as part of my healing work, and I'm getting to that again as I can physically able am able to. When I do healing work with others, there's a point at which for this trauma work that I do now, that I ask people in this healing meditation that I do to Think about those times or a time that immediately comes to them that they're still holding on to in pain or mm. something that they don't feel like was good for them. And in this kindness way, I approach that very intentionally. So to ask, how did that serve you in some way? How did that help you? And then when you when you're able to if you're able to actually get to that point of accepting the love of that situation for you then you've transcended through the pain into love which is what we all hope to do i think we do i love that transcend the pain into love absolutely and yeah the, the i mean it's just I think that it's also really amazing that where your focus on some of the work that you're doing now is trauma, mm -hmm. right? Because I think the three events that you've ex that you shared, and I know that there's many more um, that you went through in your life, were very traumatic, trauma-filled situations. Um, you know, the, the last one very much on the physical level too. Right, yeah. where some of the other ones were maybe a little bit more on the emotional, but mm -hmm. you've had you've had that, um, and so what better way to help others release the the negative aspects of the trauma, continuously holding them back from happiness, joy, love, and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's what happens. That it can either be this thing that expands you, or this thing that contracts you. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And it's one or the other, and sometimes it can be both at different times, right? You know, it can narrow you down until you're ready <laughs> to say, okay, I want to expand outward, right? And have a different whole paradigm shift. Yeah, and I don't think, to your point, I don't think we can fully release a negative experience until we accept it. Mm -hmm. And when I we, agree too. When we go to it like, like this, come towards me negative experience of my recollection, but we hold it at bay as if it's happening to someone else, that loses the opportunity to accept it fully. Yeah. And, and I think part of acceptance, I don't, I don't know if your take is on that, but I believe that part of acceptance is not even just accepting it, but taking it one level further you know, being grateful for it or yeah, having that exactly. gratitude or appreciation and saying, you know, in a way, 
I, I'm so happy this happened. Not I'm so happy, ha ha ha, but like <laughs> in the scheme of life and in the growth of who you are, which comes with a true acceptance of the self, right? Right, absolutely. Because I remember if, the first emotions that I experienced when I was brought out of the coma was nothing but gratitude and love. The two most powerful emotions in this dimension that expand mm -hmm. even our understanding of what we're capable of. When we sit in gratitude and love for ourselves exactly as we are, for everything we've experienced, and sit with that, we can then experience joy in ways that we don't fully comprehend before that. Mm. And in that, so you're, you come out and you have this over, overwhelming experience and emotions that flood through you. Was there any type of, I'm sure there was, but that you recall of divine insight and things that you got from other perspectives since you are somebody that kind of bounces between paradigms and dimensions? Yeah, it just provided me with better perspective on what I was experiencing before the accident. Mm. I don't know if I'm fully comprehending the question. Yeah, just see, I, I guess, you know, there's a lot of things that you keep on bringing back to like the 3D, mm -hmm. you know? And so at least it's my, my belief system, whether it's fully true or not, that sometimes when you have these prolonged experiences of being kept away from the three dimension, like in a coma or mm -hmm. whatnot, you know, sometimes deep states of meditation can do this too, but mm -hmm. um, you open up to access to so much more understanding wisdom and other, you know, things from those higher right. perspectives. And I was just wondering if you have any recall of any of the time that you were in the coma or any of the, uh, information or perspectives that you gained from that. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. I don't have any specific recollection of my coma. It was just like lights out, turned off sort of situation where mm -hmm. open, awake, much like now, and then it would be just turn off, no recollection of anything. So I don't know exactly where my consciousness went to at that time, but I don't, Interesting. I don't, I definitely know that it went somewhere. And when I, I'm ready for that information. It'll come to me. Mm, I love that. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm excited to hear when it does. Thank you. I'll be happy to share it. Yeah. So what else would you like to share with everybody today? Just take your life and live it. Live it fully, live it joyfully, live it goofily if that's what's up for you. Live it jokingly, living dangerously. Just enjoy everything that you have. I remember when I was a smoker and I would, I was smoked for 10 years, even cloves, which are somewhat stinkier than other cigarettes to smoke. <laughs> And they smoke longer, so you could take a full smoke break smoking one whole cigarette that would take about 10 or 11 minutes to smoke a full Dijaram special versus a Camel Light that takes two seconds or 20 seconds to smoke. <laughs> they were designed for that anyway. But when I was sitting on my porch one day in self-judgment over the cigarette that I was smoking, sitting with myself within that pain, I remembered and realized that I was suffering, that I was self-judging, and in a lot of self-judgment over the fact that I was smoking, so I decided that I would love myself. I sat there and I consciously recall loving myself and deciding to love myself, and I decided and I told myself, I'm gonna love myself with this cigarette. Hmm. I'm going to love myself through this. I'm going to enjoy these cigarettes as long as I am continuing to smoke them. I'm going to turn this 
hour a day that I ended up smoking into love. And a week and a half later, I quit. Wow. It was that last shift of into love that I was able to quit. It's profound. You know, it is because I mean, it's, uh, I think when you shift something into that love, like on some level, it's like if something isn't in alignment with loving yourself, it's going to fall away, right? Yeah. If something's more toxic and poison to your system, you're going to, you know, you just have that natural shift of, but not coming from a space of like, I shouldn't smoke, I don't need right. to smoke, or this or that, but like, okay, I'm going to smoke. I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm going to drink this coffee. I'm going to enjoy it. Like mm -hmm. enjoying what you do. And then you changed. And as a result, your behavior shifted. Right. Nothing in my life changed. I was angry at the dog, mad at the dog, mad at the house, hated everything that I was experiencing. But I chose to love myself. And that shifted my energy and experience of it to mm. that. And I, as the closing thought would say, love yourself through this pain and with the pain and because of the pain. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that you'll shift and your life will change. Mm. I love that. Thank you, Travis. Thank you very much, Christina. And where can people find you? You can find me on Liberate site. I'm there as a practitioner. They call me the Phoenix. <laughs> And you are a phoenix, and <laughs> the stories phoenix. are really the phoenix rises again. And over and over, there's been a theme in your life of being burned down into the ashes and then being reborn. Yeah, I also have a website, divineinsight.com. Yeah. And you do um, some of your own uh, podcasts and talks and things like that, and he's about to write another book. I would highly recommend that people check out this last breath. Um, not only is there an amazing uh, whole chapter that Travis written, but a lot of beautiful, divine, loving stories that you can uh, kind of immerse yourself in and hear these tales from other mediums and, and like of the afterlife. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And until next time, have a beautiful, blessed day. And make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all those fun things because it really does help our algorithms. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self. You are S-E-L-F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, my name is Travis, and I help people become more of their whole selves and help them heal traumas, whether that's physical, spiritual, or emotional level, using several modalities of healing and hands-on work and also psychic channeling. Part of me would like to say that it was a coincidence that I went to this Reiki class back in 2007 and during that class I learned that I was clairvoyant, but I think now I would describe it as my destiny, that in fact I was led to go to that class which opened up the doorway of my own health and wellness and healing modalities that I needed to learn and also gave me greater gifts to share with the world. I think it was part of my karmic destiny to return and help um, in the way that I can to help people heal their lives and become more empowered. I use a specific modality called Phoenix Fire, which I was attuned to do in 2013, which is essentially working at the soul level to protect the soul from vibrational attacks or energy vampires. And also it is very helpful for decording when you have past relationships, this life or past lives that are still resonating now in ways that aren't helping you. I also use Reiki and other forms of hands-on healing, which help move energy in the body and at the soul level, which helps to align people to the path that they are destined to live.
What I often find with my clients is that they've come to me because they feel like they are confused about something going on in their life or they continue to attract environments which they don't like or they don't feel empowered or they're questioning themselves. And so um, the modalities that I use help people understand more about the journey that they're on and how they can take control of their lives, feel better and be more of who they wanted to be when they came here. I'm most passionate, I think, about being able to create a loving, supportive, and heart and soul-centered environment for clients to heal. It's such an honor and a privilege to be in the space where a moment happens and people have this awareness about who they are or they're able to grieve over something they may not have been able to before or they are able to see themselves for who they truly are in a more empowered and soul-centered way. If anything that I've shared resonates with you or there are any questions that you have that feel unanswered in your life, I hope that you take the time to come see me even for a 15 minute reading because you'll be glad you did. You'll learn more about yourself, you'll let go of things that might be holding you back in your life and you'll feel more empowered about your decisions. I hope to see you soon.